Uh, the cochlea uh, is the structure of the inner ear that harbors the cellular machinery of the auditory apparatus. And its characteristics uh, are very, very uh, unique in order for it to carry out its marvelous function. And so the first thing that, we, that I want you to know about the cochlea is that it has two uh, labyrinths. And uh, one of these is the osseous labyrinth. And so uh, the bony canal of the cochlea is along and through here. Here's the outer bony wall of the cochlea as it spirals uh, internally within the inner ear. And then here's the other side of that bony uh, canal that coils within the uh, inner ear. Running uh, within this osseous labyrinth is a membranous uh, component. Uh, and this is the membranous labyrinth. Uh, and we see it in blue and it too will follow uh, the coiled nature of the bony labyrinth. And then uh, it'll end here finally at the uh, apex of that coiled uh, cochlea. If we take a cross section through the bony or osseous labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth, uh, this is the profile uh, that we'll see. And in that profile, uh, we will have three scala. So here is the scala vestibuli. Here's the outer portion of the osseous labyrinth. On the opposite side, uh, we have the scala tympani. And you can appreciate the bony wall of the osseous labyrinth here. And then between the scala vestibuli and the scala uh, tympani, uh, we have the scala media. And this is also uh, referred to as the cochlear duct. Now, the cochlear duct has a specialized fluid called the endolymph, the scala vestibuli, and the scala uh, tympani. Uh, have an extracellular fluid that's termed a perilymph. The endolymph, however, is very, very uh, unique in its ionic uh, concentration. Normally, extracellular fluid is very, very low in uh, potassium. However, the scala media, its endolymph, is extremely high in uh, potassium ion concentration. And this uh, assists very greatly uh, in the depolarization of the hair cells and reduces the ATP uh, requirements of the uh, hair cells uh, as well. The endolymph is uh, secreted by a specialized uh, epithelium called the uh, stria uh, vascularis, and that's shown here on this aspect of the scala media. The... Uh, Scaly are uh, separated from one another uh, by membranes. Uh, this membrane is separating the scala vestibuli from the uh, scala media. And this is aptly termed in blue here, the scala, uh, excuse me, the vestibular membrane. And then the membrane that separates the scala media uh, from the scala uh, tympani, tympani here, media here, Shaded in blue is the uh, basilar uh, membrane. Now, when we think about audition, uh, the organ of cordy uh, within the scala media is literally the masterpiece of cellular microarchitecture. Uh, this is the apparatus that's going to be responsible uh, for taking the uh, sound waves and converting them into action potentials. The organ of Cordy contains numerous structures, but the ones that we're most interested in are those shaded in green, and these are the hair cells of the organ of Cordy. Now, these are the outer hair cells, and then uh, this will be a row of inner hair cells, and the uh, stereocilia, the stereocilia, 
are embedded in the tectorial membrane that we see in through here. The hair cells, in association with some supporting cells, are uh, anchored to the uh, basilar membrane that we see down in through here. And uh, that is labeled here for you. The uh, cochlea along the basilar membrane is frequency tuned. And what you need to understand about the frequency tuning of the basilar membrane is that um, high frequency sounds will allow the basilar membrane in the base of the cochlea to start to vibrate. They are more sensitive to high frequency sound waves, and so the basilar membrane here uh, will start to vibrate, and that will cause movement of the hair cells because they're embedded in the tectorial membrane, and then they'll start to depolarize in response to high frequency sound waves. Low frequency sound waves are going to be toward the apex of the cochlea, and at this point, that area of the basilar membrane uh, will start to vibrate in response, and then the rest of the basilar membrane is fine-tuned, again, from high to low in between those areas. Now I want to guide you uh, through the uh, innervation uh, of the cochlea. And so once the uh, hair cells have become depolarized, action potentials will be conveyed along the nerve fibers that make up the cochlear component of cranial nerve at number eight. And so we see uh, innervation here of the hair cell with a cochlear nerve uh, fiber. And then that's running through a bony uh, canal in through here. And we're going to follow that out uh, toward the uh, central nervous system. Uh, those nerve fibers will start to come together. And uh, in this uh, area, uh, we'll have nerve cell bodies, those cochlear nerve afferent fibers residing within the spiral ganglion. The fibers will continue in this direction. And in this view, uh, we'll see those fibers extending away from the ganglion within the cochlear nerve itself. Uh, this is uh, within the inner ear, and so it needs to exit the inner ear to get to the uh, central nervous system. And so it will exit through the internal acoustic meatus that we see here. And then the cochlear nerve along with the vestibular nerve will form cranial nerve number eight that we see in through here. 